I have often said that you won't see a caboose on my modern era layout. Well, now there is a caboose on my layout. How did it get there? What's it doing there? That's what I'm going to tell you, coming right up. I'm Roy Smith. I'm glad you could join me for this special layout video. For many years, I thought you'd never see a caboose on my layout. Why? Because I model a modern era or present day railroad. And as we all know, modern era railroads don't run cabooses on their trains. In fact, they phased them out in the 1980s. And that of course includes the Union Pacific, which I model. But guess what? There is a caboose on the prototype at Evanston, Wyoming. It sits there rusting away in the rail yards. But that's all the justification I need to put a caboose at Evanston on my layout. What started all of this was Sparky 107 107's caboose challenge. Sparky challenged us to run a train with as many cabooses as we could on our layouts. The challenge is behind one, two, three locomotives, it doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want for a train, but I want to see how many cabooses you can have going behind the train. I responded to Sparky's challenge by running a consist of diesel locomotives with no cars and more importantly with no cabooses because as I said in my response to Sparky's challenge, cabooses are not used on modern era railroads. But after responding to Sparky's challenge, I began to think about that Union Pacific caboose sitting there at Evanston along with several other pieces of rolling stock. The UP donated the caboose to the city in 1988. This is what the caboose currently looks like inside. Now I wonder if the city will eventually fix it up just as it is doing with the railroad structures there. Visitors certainly would appreciate it, but I don't know what the city plans to do. Well, with all of that in mind, I began to look for a model of the prototype. I looked and looked but couldn't find one matching the prototype in end scale. I must have been looking in all the wrong places because to my surprise, my friend Jason of the Train Freak channel contacted me one day and said he had found a caboose that should work on my layout. He said he wanted to send it to me and in no time it arrived in the mail. And not only did Jason send me the caboose, but in subsequent messages, he also shared some interesting information with me. For example, he said that the letter P on the cupola of a UP caboose means that it was a pooled caboose shared with other railroads. Jason sent me this photo to illustrate it. There is no letter P on the cupola of the caboose that he sent to me, but isn't it great the way we model railroaders can share interesting and valuable information with each other? Jason, I want you to know how much I appreciate your generosity. So I began to read everything I could find on the internet about UP cabooses because researching the prototype is something I really enjoy doing. I wanted to know many things. For example, I wanted to know when and how my caboose was brought to the rail yards at Evanston. Jason suggested that the caboose could be brought up through Echo Canyon to Evanston. It may be purely fictitious, but I liked his suggestion and here it is. We're stepping back in time. The year is 1988 and the caboose is being hauled as part of a local freight from Ogden, Utah. Through Echo Canyon. and being dropped off at Evanston.
From my research, I learned that the caboose had been built in 1944, retired from active service in 1984, and turned over to the city of Evanston in 1988. As always, my research answered some of my questions, but left others unanswered. Then my friend Tom Barnes suggested that I turn to the Union Pacific Historical Society in Cheyenne for answers to the many questions that I always seem to have about the prototype. Well, as it so happens, I used to belong to the UP Historical Society, but I had allowed my membership to lapse. Tom's suggestion inspired me to renew my membership, and I have done just that. As always, my research was tons of fun, and I would like to share with you just a bit more of what I learned about the prototype and about my model. The model that Jason sent to me bears the road number 25069, but the prototype at Evanston is number 25184. That's not a problem. I simply removed the road number on one side of the model using a pencil eraser. That was easy to do. So far, I haven't re removed the road number on the other side and replaced it with 25184, but I will. For some reason, the road number on the prototype appears on only one side of the caboose. I don't know why it doesn't appear on both sides. But that's okay, too, because only one side of the caboose can be seen on my layout, the side that faces the front of the layout. Eventually, I will put the correct road number on the back, and I will weather the caboose heavily to match the prototype. Like all CA4 models built in 1944, 25184 has a steel body and tall cupola. These Union Pacific cabooses are one of the most recognizable caboose types in North America. The model was manufactured by Intermountain Railway and marketed by Centralia Car Shops. There were several types of cabooses on real railroads, and here they are as models. There were cupola or standard type cabooses, with the cupola either centered or offset toward one end of the caboose. My model is this type of caboose with a centered cupola. Crewmen sat in the cupola for a better view of the train ahead. And here you see me sitting in the cupola of a caboose at Steamtown in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Bay window cabooses were another type. They had projections on both sides. This afforded a better view of the side of the train ahead. And there were extended vision or wide vision cabooses in which the sides of the cupola projected beyond the sides of the car body. This combined the best of both worlds, the cupola and the bay window. As I said, Railroads, including the UP, phased out their cabooses during the 1980s. The UP began to sell or give away its cabooses in earnest right after it stopped using them in 1984. I haven't seen a single caboose in active service anywhere since then, although I understand that they are still sometimes used on maintenance of way trains, on industrial spurs requiring long reverse movements, and on tourist railroads. Nowadays, you see them in railroad museums, in city parks, or at visitor centers. You even see them used for motel rooms, such as here at the Red Caboose Motel near Strasburg, Pennsylvania. You may recall that we were supposed to have a big get-together of model railroaders here at Strasburg last year, but the pandemic put a kibosh on that idea. The UP began to use end-of-train or EOT devices in 1984 as it was phasing out its cabooses. These EOT devices are sometimes referred to as flashing rear-end devices or FREDs. They have blinking red lights to warn trains that may be following on behind. I have ordered my first N-scale EOT device. When it arrives, I will install it on a freight car and I will show it to you. You can see a nice review of the device I ordered on the TSG Multimedia channel. For now and for the foreseeable future, 25184 will remain on static display in the rail yards, both on the prototype at Evanston and on my layout. Here it joins an 060 switcher number 4420, which was brought back to the roundhouse from a city park in Evanston in December. I discussed this with you in a video called RPO, Five Awesome Deliveries for My Model Railroad, which I uploaded in December. I have painted 4420 a grayish black color to match the prototype and have applied some pan pastels to weather it lightly. 
The caboose also joins a 44-tonner which needs to be repainted blue and renumbered. The 44-tonner is one of three such locomotives that formerly worked at the Union Tank Car Company in Evanston. I think the UTCC may have donated all three of them to the city because they now sit at the roundhouse as you see here. But I can't confirm this. It's another one of those many unanswered questions that I still have. Well, we model railroaders are enchanted by cabooses, aren't we? As children, many of us watch them pass by at the end of trains. We remember the conductor and other crewmen waving to us. And now, for the first time since I began to build my layout seven years ago, I finally have a caboose on my layout. Now, don't forget to go down to the video description. There you will find all the links I mentioned you may want to click on some of them. Thanks again to Jason, and thanks to all of you for letting me share the awesome hobby of model railroading with you. As always, there are more videos for you to watch just by clicking on them over here. I'm Roy Smith. Until next time, happy railroading.